Hello and welcome to a very special credit chat today. I'm excited because we have a bunch of awesome people joining us on Twitter and in today's Google Plus Hangout. The topic is how to throw a fun dinner party on a budget. If you'd like to join us, you can join us in a couple different ways. You can join us on Twitter simply by searching for the credit chat hashtag and you'll be able to see all the conversation going on there. You can also tweet us there um, simply by using the credit chat hashtag in your tweet. You can also join us on YouTube. If you're watching the video, there is a little link on the bottom left-hand side of your screen that says be part of the conversation. And if you click on that link, it'll bring you into this YouTube chat room where we can see your questions, get your comments, and we would love to be able to engage with you there. So please consider clicking on the be part of the conversation link um, there on your left-hand side of your screen. Or if, you're, if you feel more comfortable being on Facebook, you can come to the Experian US Facebook wall and you can post your question or share your tip. Uh, we will be looking there um, for your comments. I want to let you know that on Twitter we have uh, from NBC's Today Show, Annette Joseph. Uh, she is an author and a lifestyle expert and she'll be joining us on Twitter. So we're very thankful to have her uh, with us on, on Twitter. And then I want to welcome a number of people here joining us on camera. First, we have Brian Worley, visionary and event guru and partner at Your Bash. And you can tweet him at Your Bash B. Worley. His Twitter handle is right there. We also have Cameron Huddleston. She's the contributing editor at Kiplinger. And you can tweet her by using the Kiplinger Twitter account or the CH Lebinsky. So very thankful to have Cameron here with us as well. And Claire Murdeau, she'll be joining us a little bit later. Uh, she is the writer and blogger at Ready for Zero. You can tweet her at Ready for Zero or at Claire underscore Mardeau. And I'm not sure if Rod Griffin will be joining us, but I want to let you know that he's generally here with us. And uh, if he does drop in, you can tweet him at Rod underscore Griffin. And my name is Mike Delgado. I'm a social media community manager here at Experian, and you can tweet me at Mike Delgado. And like I said, we are all um, just hanging out on Twitter and very, very thankful to have our guest with us today. Brian, um, so thankful to have you as, as our featured guest today. I wanted to start just by asking, can you share just a little bit about the work that you do in your business? Uh, yeah, Your Bash is a full production company. We do everything from, I mean, we've done everything from American Idol parties to designing the red carpet for the Emmys. We produce and design events in all phases of mostly entertainment, but also social, corporate, and... Um, uh, charity. So we've uh, kind of covered it all and have a pretty fun, I, I think I have the best job. I mean, I get to be creative and as the designer of Your Bash, I get to come up with really fun ideas and create unique spaces for our clients. Yeah, that, that is awesome. So for some of these bashes, I mean, how much, how much money sometimes goes into some of these big productions? Oh, well, I mean, I mean, you know, we do things that are small to large. I mean, yeah, so yeah. We've definitely passed the <laughs> we passed the six figure mark a lot. <laughs> well, so, well uh, which is a little bit different than a a uh, a dinner party at home. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so Brian, one of the very first questions we're going to be putting on Twitter is, uh, tell us about the last time you've thrown a dinner party, and you just mentioned to me uh, before the broadcast that you just celebrated a birthday. So can you tell us a little bit about your dinner party you just threw? Yeah, well, I think that um, I, I threw a, a birthday party for myself. Um, well, I had a dinner. I had all my friends over to my house. And um, last year, I'm one of those people I like to take everyone to dinner for my birthday rather than dividing up the check. So last year, I took 13 people to dinner. And this year, I decided to have a few more. So I had 28 people over for a dinner party at my house. Oh, and wow. I ended up spending $200 less than when I took everyone out to dinner. So there, uh, you know, there are definitely cost-saving, you know, techniques that you can have when you're throwing a dinner party at home. But then, of course, you have to remember that there's the mess that you have to clean up afterwards, and the dishwasher <laughs> will only run so many <laughs> plates at one time. So <laughs> sometimes, it, sometimes I think that maybe that my sanity would have been better if I would have just gone to dinner. <laughs> That's right, um, Cameron. I want to ask you. Um, when was the last time you thrown a dinner party? Well, uh, every year I host my big family's uh, Christmas Eve gathering, 
And uh, just to give you an idea, my father comes from a family of five, and this is the party from my father's side of the family. And so, you know, five adult children, all their children, lots of people in my house. Um, I frequently have gatherings with my friends at our house. Um, we do a lot outdoors, actually, because we live on five acres. Mm. So we have a lot of cookouts outside. Um, you know, any given weekend, we might have just small gatherings at our home with a couple friends. So we, we, we frequently have get-togethers from large to not nearly as small as not. I mean, from small to not nearly as large as Brian has. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I I very rarely entertain at home. I always say if you cut hair for a living, the last thing you want to do when you get home <laughs> is cut hair. For me, I throw parties for a living, so throwing a party is usually not one of the first things that I think that I want to do when I have some free time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, I don't, we rarely, yeah, throw any really parties at our place. We have a really small place, Um but when we do, usually we're over at my mother-in-law's house, and we do have family get-togethers. And um, I find myself, I'm always in the kitchen because I really enjoy cooking. Uh, my, my biggest problem is that I will stay in the kitchen, chopping, cooking, and I kind of like to, like to control all the food, make sure everything is the right temperature. So I rarely get out of the kitchen, which is my, my biggest problem. Um, but yeah, but I, I, love, I love parties. I love, I love getting, people, getting people together and, and hanging out, but we just rarely do so. Um, Brian, I wanted to ask you, what what are some of the mistakes maybe you have made when planning or hosting a party? Um, well, I think that just because of my experience and my background and what I do, I, I am pretty thorough, but I when I am planning a party, say at home, but I definitely think that, I mean, my piece of advice that I tell everyone when they are planning a party at home is that you're providing the venue and it, don't be afraid to ask your friends and your guests to help throw the party because you're, I mean, you want to enjoy mm -hmm. the party yourself and so many times I think that everyone has experienced this when they're throwing a party at home or wherever it is that you don't get to actually have fun because you're in the kitchen, you're cooking, you're putting, you know, stuff into the oven, you're watching the oven, yes. you're trying to clean up and I think that it's perfectly okay to ask your friends to, you know, either bring all the, you know, alcohol and you'll provide the food or maybe have everyone bring, you know, an appetizer and you'll provide the main course. So I think that that is one of the big things that I've learned when I throw a party at home or in just an entertaining in general that it's perfectly okay if you're providing the venue and I think that everyone can attest that there's a lot of work because everyone's thrown a party at home that there, it's perfectly all right that you're going to be spending a lot of time prepping for it. So to have some help and the people that you're inviting are your friends, they're your family. So I can't imagine that they would ever not be willing to help share in whatever it is, beverage, food, whatever, to help you out. And so I just think that asking for help is my first and foremost thing that I think you can always do. And that will take off a lot of stress. And that is my first thing that I do for prep. I love that. Do you have like, do you have like a certain assignments in mind for certain types of people? No, because I think that it just depends on what the the you know if you're doing a, like a holiday party, then I think that you might have a totally different um, idea of what you're trying to do, and so you might have different foods or whatever it is. Like for Valentine's Day, I did a you know champagne and chocolate party, so I provided all different things of chocolate, like cake and cookies and stuff like that, and then I asked everyone else to bring a bottle of champagne. So oh, I love that. I think that you know whatever the theme is, you kind of just tailor that to whatever um, it is, and then you reach out to your friends and your family and help them, you know, support you. That's nice. And I see Claire is just joining us. How's it going, Claire? Hi. Good, you guys. I'm just showing up fashionably late for a <laughs> dinner party chat. I apologize. That's not recommended for a good dinner party, but, <laughs> but I had some technical difficulties. But as with any good party, you got to go with the flow. So hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Right. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, Claire, I want to introduce you really quickly to, we have Brian Worley here. Hi. And uh, we have Cameron Huddleston. And I think you guys met at, at the FinCon. Yeah, we did. <laughs> awesome. I know. So uh, we're in the middle of a discussion just about, we're just getting started really on this topic of throwing a fun dinner party, Claire. Yeah. And uh, I just asked Brian about 
you know, what is maybe a mistake you've made when planning or hosting a dinner party? I'm just curious about your your old process in throwing parties. Well, I've made plenty of mistakes, that's for sure. Um, one thing is that I get very stressed out, uh, which is not fun for anyone. You know, I have, I put a lot of thought and effort into any dinner party that I throw, and then in the moment, I completely just am, you know, blinders on trying to make everything worked out, work out, stressed that people aren't having fun, very focused on all the details, instead of just relaxing and creating a climate that is easy to relax in. So I think one thing I always recommend is if you can do a lot of the prep before, um, do the prep before and also understand, like for me, I finally understood that when I, I can't cook and talk at the same time. I'm so bad at it. I would never be a celebrity chef, ever. I could, like, unfortunately, this is this is not my audition to get hired for, for Food Network because I, it would be me doing this. And being like, no, I don't need any help. I don't need any help. So um, one thing for me is that I uh, I would recommend doing prep first, knowing also the things you can and can't handle, and then asking for help, too. It's only when I start asking for help that I'm like, oh, okay, that, that wasn't so bad. I don't need to handle it all myself. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm like terrible, too, because I'll sit there in the kitchen, and I want to kind of control everything. I, I'm usually a very laid-back person, but when it comes to, like, being in the kitchen, I, I, I want to be in total control. So it's like, oh, no, let me, no, I'll, I'll handle the cutting. I'll let me, let me do this. But then it ruins the whole party because I can't interact with anybody. I just want to sit in the kitchen all day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Cameron, I want to I ask you, um, have you made any mistakes or, or learned anything through the parties you've thrown? <laughs> I, you know, I, I couldn't agree more with what Brian said about asking guests to help. Not only does that help lower your stress, but it also it cuts the cost. You know, you're not putting the entire bill for the dinner or for whatever sort of party you're hosting. Um, I agree with Claire too about planning, um, and and really, I mean, planning like far in advance, like figuring out, you know, how many days ahead do you need to to buy the food, you know. Um, if there's anything you can prepare the night before and keep it in the refrigerator so you're not rushing around at the last minute. I too get stressed out if it's planned well though and I really got everything almost like on an hour by hour schedule then I'm much more relaxed. Um, the hardest thing for me is because I have um, small children my youngest mm -hmm. requires a lot of supervision. <laughs> so, so trying to prepare for an event when he's around can be difficult. Um, um, my oldest, my my older daughters are actually old enough now to kind of keep an eye on him, so that works really well. Tell them they're going to babysit their little brother while I'm getting ready. But you know, if necessary, if you are having a party, you have younger children. Um, you know, and you can afford it, you might even want to consider having a babysitter who is there to watch your children as you're preparing and even watch your children, you know, during the event if it is an event that's geared toward adults only. Um, you know, even if you've got families with other children, if you've got one like I do who's a lot younger than the rest of the children, um, you know, it still doesn't ha hurt to have extra help with that child. Totally, totally. I just saw on Twitter that uh, Christine uh, was just saying, uh, Brian, that loves your idea of a chocolate champagne party. <laughs> that is so yeah, cool. I, I just saw that. I just, I just tweeted her back to send pics after she does it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know, but Claire used to work at a chocolate factory. Oh, yeah. Oh, you did? I did, yeah. Uh, in San Francisco, it's called Cho. So I used to, uh, it was a real life. Oompa Loompa, as you know. <laughs> but um, it was, yeah, it was fantastic. I got to talk about chocolate and eat it all day. So. <laughs> that would almost be the worst job for me, aside from working at a candy factory to, or a bakery. I would be, I would have to live at the gym afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me think, uh, Brian, what other, like, other kind of theme parties have you thrown? Because I love the, the chocolate champagne party idea. Uh, at home, well, I mean, when I moved into my house, obviously everyone, a lot of people throw a housewarming party. Um, yeah. I am fortunate enough that my backyard was redone for an HGTV TV show, so I have a really killer backyard that can entertain probably about 75 people comfortably. 
So nice. um, I've thrown birthday parties for friends, surprise parties. Um, but it is a lot of work. So I think that one thing that I did is I went out and bought, I, I've had Thanksgiving in my backyard. And luckily, I live in Southern California where it's warm. So we set up long tables underneath this arbor that I have that's full of grapevines. And, oh, um, you know, set up for Thanksgiving. But what I went out and did just because it saved me, I think, just any headache is that I went out and bought plates, glassware, wine glasses, silverware, napkins, everything that I would need, platters, everything that I need, and I kind of call it my party in a box. And I put all of the plates back into the, you know, the boxes. I keep them in the boxes when I'm not using them, and I just store everything away. The wine glasses, I mean, I have the ones that I use on a regular basis, but then I have, I guess, my party entertaining plates and platters and all those things that I keep just stored away because it just makes my life easier to know that I have it all. And then I can just pull it out rather than stressing mm. about, am I going to have enough of this? Am I going to have enough of that? Um, and so I bought, you know, I just went and got it at Ikea, a lot of it. And that way I have plenty of it. It's one of those things I can throw it in the dishwasher right before everyone arrives, throw it in the dishwasher afterwards. And one of our things at our company is that we really try to be as eco-friendly and green as possible when throwing events. And there's so much waste that goes... Um, into throwing parties. There's so much trash mm. and stuff. So really anything I can do to, you know, help the environment. I know it sounds kind of cliche, but it does, I mean, help by having, you know, plates and glassware and flatware instead of throwing away paper plates. And trust me, it would make my life a whole lot easier. And I mm. think that definitely hire someone that evening to help kind of clean up so that you can enjoy as well. So, you know, if you can find someone, it's worth the few extra dollars to have someone there just kind of as a support staff um, to help you with your, you know, your cleanup while you're enjoying your guests. Because, I mean, there's no, no one wants to go to a party or throw a party and not get to enjoy the party that they're actually throwing. That's right. And I want to remind guests, uh, if you're watching on here on YouTube, that you can join us on Twitter simply by using the credit chat hashtag. Or you can also click on the little uh, icon on the left-hand side of your screen on YouTube that says be part of the conversation, and you'll be brought into our YouTube chat room. Brian, as you were talking, uh, we got a, a comment from a DJ Dex Master who says, can you come over and do dishes for me before I host my party? I need to clean. LOL. <laughs> Yeah, no. a lot of work. No. <laughs> That's another thing. No one to say no for the dinner party. No. <laughs> but I, I love, Brian, I love your idea of having the party in a box where everything is there. Every, yeah, I, mean, every I have tablecloths, I have napkins, I literally just keep it all so that it, and it's all in my garage, it's easy to pull out whenever I'm doing a party, and then I just, it's clean once I put it away and it's done, and then when I'm going to have another party, I pull it back out, and it's just one of those things that I, instead of, I just made the investment because I knew that I wanted to entertain, and it just alleviated the stress every time I was going to throw a party, and I know that I have it. Does anybody throw, like, theme parties? Just curious, like, having, like, a certain theme to the event? I would say I, I, I mean, I could spout out all the ideas for theme parties that I would ever want. Uh, I have a million of them. Sometimes I don't actually execute on them, but one thing that I consistently do, um, I found, is just I love picnics. I love, you know, like I know we're talking about dinner parties, dinner parties. Yeah. But I love hosting brunches, like or breakfasts mm. or picnics. I feel like that kind of thing where it's themed around a, a kind of uh, time of day meal. Uh, I love doing that, and those ones are are pretty easy. And and I've also found that sometimes you know you can host a a, a meal earlier in the day or even a, a picnic where it's a potluck picnic, and it's more cost effective in that way too. So. Um, sometimes, not always. It's, it's whatever you make it, but um, eggs, eggs are cheap. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can poach them and make them fancy, so yeah. <laughs> That's true. So, um, question for the panel. Uh, maybe I'll start with you, Brian. Uh, how do you like to invite people to your like a dinner party? Like when you had your, your bash, um, do you like to do things through email, phone calls? Uh, I pretty much do everything through paperless posts now and email, sometimes texting if it's a little bit last minute. But uh, again, it's just 
in our business, I mean, again, like I was saying, being green, you know, invitations, they cost money. Um, you're trying to save money when you're probably throwing a dinner party or a party at home. So I, I really think very few... I mean, I know I have a lot of friends that do amazing invitations, and I'm not trying to discount what they do, but I definitely mm -hmm. think, like, in the wedding space and in really high-end events or events like that, setting, sending an invitation and a paper invitation sets the mood, especially for whatever the theme is. But I think that if you're inviting people to your home, there's mm -hmm. not really a necessity to actually send a paper invitation anymore and that you can come up with really creative and great options through paperless post or evite or whatever. So um, that's my choice, definitely. Cool, cool. Has anybody ever tried doing Facebook uh, events? Does that work for you? or? I think it's the worst way to do it because no one checks their, it? their email. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I never realized that I have an event e invite on Facebook and then people are asking me why I didn't show up and... You know, I say, well, I, I never even noticed that there was an invite. So, no, certainly the more direct approach with, the, like, the evites if you want to do, or, you know, any sort of email invite or the, you know, calling your friends or texting your friends if it's just a casual gathering with friends. Yeah. Um, I found that also sending, a, uh, sending people a Google reminder or a Google calendar reminder, mm -hmm. um, that can be effective. That's a great I always, thing. I like to to check them and then they'll get the reminder email and then also you can link details in the actual the info section of those calendar invites. Cool. I think that's a great tip, Claire. Uh, the next question we're going to be posting on Twitter is what are some affordable ways to set the mood for a fun evening? And oh my maybe, gosh, maybe... you guys. I have some props so if you Show guys want to see what I brought. Okay. First of all, um, so <clears throat> I'm going to play you a song on my guitar. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. But, um, <laughs> that would be a first in our hangout. I know that would Claire, be a first. But, uh, yeah, I do. It's very pretty, isn't it? I, don't, I can't play it, but it's lovely. Um, uh, actually, I've been loving music at dinner parties lately. I think it's really fun um, and easy, especially if you crowdsource it with the people that you invite. If anybody does have that kind of um, talent uh, that they want to share, it's it's really fun to kind of ease some, not even tension, but just set the mood of something that that's friendly and, and interactive. Um, of course, you can also always uh, put on Spotify or music. And I, what I've done, too, is invite friends to share their playlists um, in, in advance. So then you have something that you, that you can put on that people feel like they can collaborate on or even setting one out that people can add their own uh, music to. Um, so that's one. And then another one, too, is Fresh Flowers which I have right here, um, I think that that's another awesome way to set uh, kind of a nice bright feeling to, and it can, I mean, it can be whatever you want, but they're super easy. Just putting a little bit of something alive in a room, um, I found, makes it just go from like here to, to taking it a, a level above, and it's so easy, and you can do it pretty cost effectively. I think also that when you're, I always tell people to shop at home, I mean, I know it's just, it sounds kind of cheesy, but shop at home because you'd be amazed at how many vases you may have collected over the years when you've had flowers delivered to you or candles you may have. Um, so I always shop. I call it shopping at home, but I always shop at home first, and then I find everything that I have already, and then I augment that with things that I need to go out and buy because you would be surprised. And I mean, obviously, I've taken it upon myself to create my party in a box, but... Aside from that, I have stuff all over my house, and especially for me, because I have it left over from events, and I may bring it home, but I think that, that people are surprised at how much they actually do own that they can use and incorporate into whatever the theme is or whatever the party is to help save some money. I would say candles are the easiest way. You know, turn down the lights and light a few candles. You have a warm glow. They're inexpensive, especially if you buy the ones... They already come in the little glass photos, not the tea lights that can set things on fire. If people get <laughs> um, but, you know, I agree with Brian about finding things around the home. Like for the holidays, a very easy way to decorate, and I've done it. Um, you know, you buy your cranberries to make your cranberry sauce, extra cranberries. You can easily put them into like a mason jar 
with some water and then use some greenery like evergreen greenery you know clip a few branches off your Christmas tree or whatever you have growing outside um, very simple looks nice um, I do that all the time you know like I said I live on five acres so I've got a lot of a lot of greenery around me um, but very easy way to you know without even going to the store to buy the flowers to add something you know kind of living into your into your decor but I was just going to add you know I I've and speaking of theme parties I did I used to have a Halloween party for years um, you know and you can imagine there's a theme to that you use scary decorations and you know you use little cute labels for your food but a lot of times people might not even notice your decor that much unless it's really over the top like you you spend a lot of effort and perhaps even time and money investing in your decor and then Think about when you go to other people's parties. How often have you actually noticed mm. the decor? You know, if it's something that's really spectacular, yes. But otherwise, you might not even take note of it. You're just there to, you know, enjoy your time with your friends or your family. And so I would say, you know, focus on creating that, you know, having the good food and the nice atmosphere and don't put a too, lot of, too much time and effort into, <laughs> into the decor. Candles, flowers, something simple. So true. I had a question about music selection because it's always fun to have music going on in the background. And Claire, I love how you mentioned about asking people for their playlists. Brian, um, how do you go about choosing music uh, to set a mood for a party? Uh, again, I think it goes back to whatever the theme is, or just mm. the, I. I think there's nothing worse than not being able to talk to people, so keeping it ambient, more background music, so that you can have enjoy the conversation, get to know the people that you may or may not be meeting. Um, one of the most fun dinner parties that I ever had, I invited, I had just done three different weddings, and so I invited all of the couples, oh. and then I invited some of my friends, and so I had 17 or 18 people, and besides me, no one knew more than two other people. Oh. So it was a fun group, and we ended up having so much fun that we all ended up going to a Halloween party together and went as a group costume. And so I think that, you know, and that doesn't really go back to music. It was just, no. I just thought of it. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. again, I wanted to make sure that everyone got a chance to know each other, and I'm one of those people that I was always like, y'all need to meet each other, and y'all need to meet each other because y'all just got married, and y'all just got married, or y'all are my mm -hmm. friends from this, or whatever. And I just like to bring, like, random groups of people together, and it was actually one of the most fun dinner parties because no one really knew each other, and I thought that it was such a fun way to just interact with, all of my different random groups of friends. That that is awesome. That is awesome. I mean, I never even thought about like, yeah, how do you go about choosing like the right mix of people? And I love that you just kind of brought in a bunch of people who didn't know each other, and that turned out to be a great party. It was it was so much fun. Literally, we went as aliens for Halloween a few weeks later. <laughs> one of the guys who was there, he was having a big Halloween party, and so that night we all decided, hey, let's go to the. Let's go to the Halloween party together, and so I had our costumes made, and we had a, uh, a great time, and it was just such a random mix of people that ended up being, you know, friends. So it was fun. That's so cool, Cla Claire. Um, when you throw parties, whether it's a picnic or a brunch or something, um, how do you go about selecting those groups of people? You know, it's it's funny you mentioned that. I actually just went to uh, a dinner that was. It's a service called Eat With, and they, they curate dinner parties where people mm. just are hosts, and then they host people to come to their, their apartment or their place. Um, and and it's so cool because, in theory, it's the same thing. You wouldn't necessarily know people that you're going to, um, but it's just like a dinner party. And, and, th and that way it's kind of self-selecting because it's like if you're going to go to some place where you don't know anybody and you're deciding to, to you know, pay for that service, it, it kind of makes it something where you know you're going to have conversation. In terms of how I invite my own friends, um, I, I like to think that I, I hang out with pretty personable people, uh, and I think that what I do try and think about, however, is that uh, if there is someone that I know in my mind who might be a little bit more shy or who really doesn't know anyone, you know, maybe it's a, it's a party that it's friends from college or there's a lot uh, the majority are friends that I have from college um, and I have one person who's a co-worker or something like that just making sure that I, I do 
proper intros or maybe I'm there to introduce them to the other people and make sure that they feel comfortable as well because I'm sure we've all been to those those gatherings where you just reminisce about about the memories that you've all shared before and if somebody doesn't feel like they've shared in them they, they might not be able to contribute as much so um, so just thinking about that and being being aware as I, as I introduce everybody to one another. Well, Brian, you, Brian, you got a new fan. Uh, Average Joe just tweeted out that he, he'd go. <laughs> he loves the idea of having random parties. That is so cool. Yeah. You know what? You got to think outside the box, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's talk about food. Um, Budget-friendly appetizers. And, Brian, since you just hosted a party, I'll start with you. What were some appetizers you, just, you decided to have? Uh, we did a cheese and, you know, crudite spread. Um, what else did we do? We did, no, we, we didn't really do much in the way of appetizers because dinner was a buffet and it was so big because we had brisket, uh -huh. which um, I'm from Texas and I live in L.A., but I had uh, salt lick from Texas, which is like the best barbecue. So we had brisket from there. We did uh, pork tenderloin lighters and then uh, we did sausage and then we had like five different salads so wow it was a full on luckily my friend Keely is an amazing cook so she helped I cut um, but I left <laughs> a bit more to her so I'm not that that's what I can eat and I'm a good eater <laughs> but when it comes to the cooking I delegate and that's why I said <laughs> in the beginning ask for help and that is not one of my strong suits because I always hire caterers for all of our events so um, <laughs> I can make eggs, cereal and I really like to bake so that's, uh, those are my, the baking and baking a cake is my therapy but other than that cooking um, I throw it in the Vitamix and blend it up and I can make soup. <laughs> other than that, it, tell me what yeah. to do. Um, so maybe Claire and Cameron may be better food. Especially since Cameron does, you know, cooks for everyone for Christmas, I leave that to my mom. Nice. Well, let me ask you this. So, you know, with all the events you've gone to and, and host and set up, has there been a standout appetizer that you just loved? Um, I think that, let's see, there's not really anything that I love. What I do not like is when you're at an event and you have, like, a skewer or there's somehow the appetizer is incorporated into something that you end up having to hold afterwards, and then you're like, what do I do with <laughs> Or right, right. Bowl or whatever. So I think that appetizers should always be one, possibly two bites, and it should be as easy to. It, it should literally go into your body, and, <laughs> and, there, and disappear. Out, where am I going to put this trash? Because, <laughs> and especially when we do. I mean, we're doing events for like 200, 300, 400 people, so we always have to make sure that you know there's weight staff picking that up. But at your house, it may be a little bit different. Um, but for me, appetizers should be very simple. They should be easy. They should be you know one or two bites, and the the least amount of residual whatever you're holding <laughs> should be incorporated oh. into that appetizer. Totally, like holding a chicken bone, and you're like, yeah, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I know it's fun. Like we're, I mean, I'm doing an event coming up, and we're doing, uh, you know, mini Chinese to-go containers with chopsticks oh. and a little salad. I mean, that's a heart. That's more of a meal, so it's hearty. So it's going to take your guests longer to enjoy it and to eat it. But when um, you're stuck with like, a, you know, a chicken saute, and you have this big skewer, and then you have to dip it into, you know, some kind of dip and then the dip drips everywhere. I think the best appetizers are easily self-contained and you don't have to do much other than pick it up, put it in your mouth, and you don't have to think about it because otherwise things dribble down your shirt, you get dirty, your house gets dirty, you're stuck with a stick, you're stuck with napkins, you're stuck with all these things and for me I just try to create menus that are very easy um, and that's that's one of my biggest pet peeves and I'm sure everyone's been to a party where you're like, what am I going to do with this now? <laughs> You know, those little like Chinese spoons, or you know, and they put like a little dollop of something on it, and then you're like, now I have this plastic spoon, and what do I do with it? <laughs> yeah, totally. I, I, I've totally been there. Um, Cameron, let me let me ask you: uh, Do you have any uh, budget-friendly appetizers you can recommend? Um, Brian touched on it kind of briefly. Cheese is such an easy one. 
you know, offering a variety of cheeses. People can just kind of cut off the mouth they want, put it on a cracker, stick it in their mouths. Very easy, usually inexpensive, and you don't have to think a lot about it, you know, so you can focus on maybe preparing something a little more special for your dinner instead of putting time and effort into some really elaborate appetizer, you know, and you don't want your guests to fill up so much on those appetizers that they're not going to eat the main course. Just something to kind of, you know, keep them occupied and, you know, satiate their appetite just a little bit until the main course comes. Um, but yeah, nothing that, you know, nothing that's going to take a lot of effort. The cheese is easy, you know, any sort of like um, chip with dip, and I'm not talking, you know, potato chips and French onion dip. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> But you know, I, I you know I have learned from experience though that people they do gravitate to those um, the comfort foods and the things that are familiar. You know, so you know you never know. I mean, the potato chips with the French onion dip might go quicker than you know your fancy hors d'oeuvres. So I certainly keep the crowd in mind um, when you're deciding what sort of appetizers. You don't want to introduce things that are foreign to your crowd or that they might you know. If they're more sophisticated, you know, and they and they don't, there, there's no way they're going to eat the potato chip in the dip. Or if it's you know Super Bowl, surely, you know, you don't want to have caviar at your Super Bowl party. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, you just you, you have to keep the crowd in mind, and you have to keep the type of party in mind. Yeah, as you were talking, um, Albert CCS just tweeted about going to Pinterest for appetizer ideas. Yes, have you guys ever done good. that? Pinterest for appetizers for decorating ideas. Um, great source. Just don't. I mean, obviously, there's some people who really, you know, are over the top, and you know, <laughs> you're gonna look at their their post on Pinterest and feel like there's no way you could ever measure up. So, you know, focus on the ones that you can do that aren't gonna be too stressful for you or certainly too expensive. Claire, I want to ask you: uh, Do you have any favorite types of appetizers you like to offer guests? Yeah, I actually stick almost primarily to things that are like fruit or vegetable based. Uh, a lot of things that are really easy to grab along with some sort of dip or like if you can pair it in a way that's sweet and salty, sometimes you know fruit with that cheese um, or nuts or, or anything. Uh, to be honest, learning from experience, I've done it's like the saddest thing in the world. You, you When you look at, you spend like an hour crafting these like beautiful little um, uh, little toasts with like all of these things on them. I mean, they're gone in like 30 seconds because they're so <laughs> grabbable. And then it's just like, and then you're like, wow, I spent a lot of time and potentially money just, and, and, and they just disappear. And then it looks yeah. like you have provided nothing for your guests. <laughs> like the, the plate is empty, whereas a bowl of something where it's a dip or something like that, that, you know, it kind of, it, it stays there for a bit longer, and it's much easier to refill. And and to, yeah, and 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 also from personal experience, I do. I mean, I have a hard time laying off from the appetizer, and then sometimes I'm full by the time the meal occurs. And I I would personally much prefer to have something really, as Cameron mentioned, special for the meal, and focus a lot of more of my time and attention there. So fruits, yeah. veggies, easy stuff like that, things that like people can pick and. And, and curate their own kind of appetizer from. And back to what Cameron said, I think comfort food is, I mean, everyone loves to go to a party, though, and also have comfort food. And if you go to, I mean, uh, I would suspect that most people go to Costco before they start planning a party just because everything is in bulk and you can get it um, significantly cheaper. Otherwise, you end up, but you sometimes end up with a whole lot left over. But also, like, Trader Joe's is great because they already have pre-made appetizers that you can just throw into mm. the oven or whatever. And both Costco, Trader Joe's, stuff like that make entertaining so much easier these days because it's already prepared for you. You may just have to heat it up. You may just have to, you know, take it out of the wrapper, whatever it is. And that way it saves you some time, some stress. And going back to what I said at the beginning, appetizers are a great thing to ask your guests to bring because I feel like so many people mm. these days have – you know, food allergies, or they like some things, they don't like other types of food, and it's so hard nowadays to figure out what people actually will eat, um, 
and we're always having to create menus for so many different people that asking your guests to bring an appetizer that's their favorite appetizer and you kind of put a twist on it, oh, I want you to be involved and I want you to bring your favorite appetizer, you know, then you know that they're bringing something that they're going to want to eat so that if you're not providing, you know, a full meal that hits their dietary restrictions, at least they're getting to eat what they know they're going to enjoy and they're going to like it. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm like loving all these suggestions. I'm just taking all these notes. I love the ideas of having like simplicity, easy. I, I made uh, this last Thanksgiving. I, I I did this like recipe for. I got these dates, and then I had to cut each date open, take out the seed, put goat cheese inside, close it up, then get bacon, wrap it around. And I, it took me, I don't know, an hour and a half to make like ten of these things. Yeah, that is, <laughs> and then that roast is the best them. dessert. That's huh? the best. That is the best appetizer right there. It's like, it like Claire said, the sweet and savory. Nothing's better than a bacon wrap date. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's delicious. But it took me so long, and they were gone like instantly. I was like, where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's when you need to look for the stuff that's already made at the warehouse club or the Trader Joe's. I'm all for buying my appetizers at those places where it's just stick it in the oven and that's pull right. it out and set it on the table. That's great. Uh, we're now tweeting out, and they're talking about champagne on the tweet chat right now. Uh, best of drink options to have available that won't break the bank. So I'm really curious, um, what are some good drink options for your guests? I, for our part, my parties, we usually go through a lot of vodka. <laughs> and just provide mixers, and then people can. I like. I don't provide a bartender when I do parties at home. I always kind of just set out a table and put everything on the table so that everyone can make their own drink. Because that way, they're their own bartender. Makes mm -hmm. my life a lot easier. And then everyone's making it as strong as they want to make it. They can make the concoction whatever they want. Typically, I think that most good guests always bring a bottle of wine if they're if you're inviting people to your house. Um, the, I, you know, Miss Manners would say to bring a gift to the host. So I just incorporate that into, you know, what everyone's drinking. Um, white, t people typically bring red wine, so I always make sure to have red wine and rosé, which rosé has become, like, so hot these days um, so that it's chilled because you can't really chill if, if someone brings you red or white wine fast enough to get it out. But... Um, I just I, I think less is kind of more in this situation when it comes to drinks and just letting your guests be their own bartender and just providing a few things of, you know maybe one or two types of beer have some um, buckets that have ice in them with you know beer already chilled in it some wine and just make your life easier. Love that sounds really good. Um, Cameron, do you have any suggestions for types of drinks that you like to offer? I would agree um, with Brian. You know, certainly the mix your own drinks, wine and beer are always popular. I would just add, make sure you have a selection of non-alcoholic drinks for the people who are the sober drivers and the people who just don't drink. You know, something beyond just offering them water, maybe some sodas or like some sparkling water, seltzer water, that sort of thing, so that they have something to hold on to while everyone else is holding their cocktail. Love seltzer, Cameron. Absolutely love seltzer. <laughs> uh, Claire, do you have any favorite drink options you like to offer guests? Yeah, actually speaking to seltzer uh, water, my friend who doesn't drink, she calls it party water, but she will take different flavor. You know how there's different flavors of the seltzer water? Yeah, so right, she'll have right. That, and then she'll like have some bowls of like fruit and then some fruit juices, so it's almost like that whole, I mean, mm. I love it. It's super refreshing, especially on a hot day, and it is, you're yeah. right, it's, it's nice to provide that to encourage people who are like the sober drivers to, to have, you know, they're not sticking to water. They can have some party water. Um, and uh, I also, I, my friends love beer, so I ask them to bring their favorite beer um, so that you can do a mix and, and match. And a lot of times it's a good conversation starter because they'll bring something that's new or different. Um, and then this is always, I guess, for uh, one trick that I have utilized before, which is if you go to Costco, you can return um, you can return unopened bottles of of liquor or, or mm. booze. So it's it's nice because in that way you can maybe have that backup. But I mean, I don't think I've ever been to a party where there's been like a lack of because, like both of you mentioned, it's people bring their own stuff. A lot of times people 
bring their own stuff, so you end up with this surplus. And so if you want to recoup some of those costs, you can always return to Costco, if that's where you bought it from. <laughs> Not if it's from somewhere else, but yeah. Also, I think that one thing that people tend to kind of overlook when they're planning a party, because I this is the one area that I sometimes forget, is ice. And just make sure that you have plenty of ice. I always designate, it, designate one of my friends to bring ice. Such a good idea. Um, it's one of those things. My ice maker cannot make enough ice so to true. implement an entire party. So I always ask. Like I know it's a pain. Trust me, because I'm always that person that brings ice to my friend's party for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> carrying these big bags of ice and it's wet and whatever. But <laughs> the ice is that thing that you're like, oh my god, I just totally forgot about the ice. So I think ice is that that key thing because it melts so fast and so it's not on the forefront of your mind. Um, mm -hmm. when you're planning everything else. So, um, ice, ice, yeah, ice. that is so true. Great, great ice, tip. Ice. I'm la I'm laughing right now on Twitter. Your comment about <laughs> about the bartender. <laughs> Wise Red says, uh, "Being your own bartender sounds a little dangerous." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really funny. <laughs> serve, serve yourself. Just be serve yeah, yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, next question we're tweeting out is. Uh, do you have any advice on how to save money for dinner? Do you have any crowd-pleasing recipes? And I'll start with uh, Claire. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, so, so recipes for dinner. Um, usually, I again, I go back to simplicity, and I know that this is not for everyone because it's one of those things that some people are phenomenal cooks, and like my, fr I have a friend who just makes the most amazing meals and she's very willing to like go and deep dive deep into an unknown recipe. Um, whereas I have found that the, the things that I can create best are usually fairly simple and they don't take a lot of extra ingredients. So I think we start to get ahead of ourselves sometimes when we're planning for these parties because we want to impress our friends. And so you want to like have a really, you know, great dinner but, but again it's I think usually my go-to recipe is actually anything in a cast iron skillet because mm. you can make amazing chicken that's just phenomenal and does not take very long. Um, it gets that like nice crispy skin and everything. Um, chicken you can get fairly inexpensively. And then a really nice salad to accompany it um, with some, some fun things in there. And then for the sides, keeping it simple but flavorful um, and have that balance of richness with with freshness too, I think is is often appreciated. Again, if it's you know the theme is, I mean, I we I was just at FinCon. We came back from New Orleans. I think the only thing I did was eat fried food when I was there, which was like the greatest thing ever. But um, <laughs> so if it's that you know that kind of theme, then by all means, serve as much fried food as possible. Um, I would eat it all. But if you're just going to go for the general dinner party, what I usually do is just try and have that balance and and focus. Uh, you can find a lot of good things for five ingredients or less, or a lot of good recipes. Cameron, do you have any favorite dishes that you like to serve? Um, I, you know, it really just depends on what the the event is. Of course, you know, if it's Christmas or Thanksgiving, there's got to be a turkey. Um, and even if you if you don't want to put the time and effort into preparing the turkey yourself, usually you can buy them. I mean, you can go to like a barbecue place and get a smoked turkey. I've done that before. Um, but, you know, I would, I would point out ways to save money, certainly. Um, you know, some types of protein are a lot less expensive. You know, your poultry is going to be, your chicken is going to be less expensive than red meat. Um, of course, burgers are a lot cheaper than steaks. And when it comes to vegetables, you want to look for what's in season. You know, so if you're going to be, you know, asparagus are in season in the spring. A lot of times we like to serve them, perhaps along with our Christmas dinner, but they're going to cost a lot more than because they're not in season. So looking for those vegetables that are in season are going to save you a lot of money. Um, you are more likely, even though sometimes you can get a deal by buying things in bulk, if you shop at the supermarket instead of the warehouse club, warehouse clubs, the price doesn't fluctuate that much with the season. So shopping at the supermarket for your um, your produce, your vegetables, you're going to probably get a better deal shopping there because the prices will be lower if it's in season. Um, and anything that you know that you can make a lot of 
easily or even types of meals that are like um, put it together like a doing kind of like a fajita or a taco bar you know where you provide them with mm -hmm. some chicken some meat or some fish for people who eat one but not the other or even beans you know and you can put it in to the tortillas with some really interesting toppings um, very easy you know dinner party food for something that's casual you know if you're doing something in the summer that's outdoors barbecue um, I don't make my own. I buy it, but that makes it easier. You know, you can buy a lot of it. It's not too expensive. Uh, you know, and then have your guests contribute all the sides. Um, those are some some easy and inexpensive things you can do. Brian, I wanted to ask you about um, keeping your guests entertained, and I think you know it was amazing that you just brought together a whole bunch of people who didn't know each other, and that became entertainment in itself. Are there are there games you ever suggest or things you do to to get conversation going? No, I mean I kind of rely on my friends to be adults and to kind mm -hmm. of to take it upon themselves to introduce themselves. I mean I'll make introductions at if I can, but a lot of times I am running around and trying to do things as well. Um, I have done dinner parties before. There's um, a thing called How to Host a Murder. And it's a box game, and we've actually done it where we'll transform the dining room into whatever the theme is. Once we did this one called Murder on the Orient Express, and everyone, you send out an invitation, and it comes in a box, and it gives everyone a description of what their character is. And so we had all Chinese food for dinner, and then we oh. went to the dining room, and everyone sat around the dining room table, and then you try to solve the murder and figure out who the murderer is. So um, sometimes it's fun to do things like that as well if you're trying to do an entertainment or when you're going back to like themed ideas. But otherwise, mm -hmm. I just feel like if you're trying to do play games and stuff, all of a sudden it becomes more like a baby shower. Or <laughs> and I just don't feel like when I'm trying to, I mean, there's background music and I'm trying to bring my friends together just to have yeah. fun. Uh, I don't want to have it that structured. So yeah. I just think that the night should play out how it will, and people will come. They'll leave when they're ready to, and they may meet a few new friends. And from there, they're just going to enjoy themselves. But we don't need to have, like, you know, pin the tail on the donkey or whatever it is. <laughs> thinking way outside in a different age demographic. But I, I just am uh, more for less structure, more fun, and just kind of let things develop how they will as opposed to being like, mm -hmm. Okay, this is my timeline, and because so much of my events that I do in real life are like step and repeat opens, press arrives, talent arrives, they walk through the carpet, party starts, you know, this starts now, we send out, you know, late night appetizers, and for my parties, I just want to, I want to enjoy myself, but I also want my guests to enjoy themselves, I don't want there to be a lot of thinking involved, and I just want everyone to come, eat, have fun, drink, mingle, socialize, and then go home. Nice. Uh, one of the last questions we're asking is, uh, you know, planning and hosting a dinner party can be pretty stressful, and um, you can often be found just busy in the kitchen. Do you have any final tips for being the host? And um, maybe I'll start with Cameron. Uh, Cameron, do you have suggestions on um, on how not to be stressful? <laughs> how to enjoy yourself? Uh, list, you know, make list. Certainly create a budget so that you're not stressed out that you just spent 500 when you really should have just spent 200 or 100. Um, so you create your list of what you need to do, what you need to buy, you set a budget, and then, you know, as you're preparing everything, you might want to pour a nice glass of wine to calm your nerves before the <laughs> guests arrive. Nice. Claire, and any suggestions to help reduce stress and just really enjoy the party? Just to relinquish control. That's my thing, is just, it's going to be good. Yeah, you know, It's going to be fun. When you think about it, you have friends, you have food, you have music. I mean, those are all ingredients for something that should be very fun. So yeah. um, trying to control any aspect of it. Uh, I mean, obviously, try to be aware um, and cater to things as they come up if you, if you need to. But otherwise, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be good. Just relax. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, I'll leave the last last one to you. Uh, any any final tips to just reduce stress? I, you know, I have to take my own advice when I'm working with a bride, especially. I always give them, you know, a piece of advice. I say, don't put 
your wedding day up on a pedestal because it goes by so fast and if you put all these expectations on your wedding day you're not going to have that much fun so I think the same thing I just have to take my own advice and it's just like just have fun enjoy the process enjoy your friends and family being there or whoever you've invited because obviously you want them there because it's a smaller select group and just enjoy that that evening or day breakfast lunch whatever it is and have fun just have fun it's all about having fun and uh, you know there's nothing that can go wrong that you can't fix really unless your house burns down <laughs> awesome. alright um, so now we're at the last five minutes and we have the last final five questions and these are just fun questions just to get to know each 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 person more personally and this is brought to you by Claire from Ready for Zero Claire I'm excited to hear the questions you have for us today. Okay, great. I know this is how. See, you talk about like letting your your guests be grown ups and do their own thing. I, I harass them with questions and I make them answer questions for me. Um, so my first question is: uh, When you are flying, I was just on an airplane. When you're flying, what's your drink of choice when the little cart comes by? Hmm. Okay, Brian, what's your drink of choice? Uh, apple juice. Nice. Apple juice. Mm-hmm. Cameron? Water. You need to stay hydrated while you're up in the air. I usually go for coffee. For I coffee. love the taste of coffee, yeah. Well oh, that's fun. I asked because I don't I don't think I drink tomato juice at any other point, but I always get <laughs> tomato juice. <laughs> I don't know what it is. At you know, thousands of feet up in the air, I'm like, yeah, that's Okay. <laughs> I'm the same way. I never drink apple juice, but for right? some reason, they're pushing it by in the cart. I'm like, I love apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, it's a funny. It's a funny thing. Um, all right. If you had to to choose one, just schedule it in your day. Would you schedule time to watch a sunrise or a sunset? This one is a la Michael. He he was talking about this. So. Okay, Brian. Do you like sunrises or sunsets more? I would say sunset because sunrise means I'm having to get up probably too early. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Cameron. I'm, I'm with I'm with Brian on that one. I'd rather see the sunset than the sunrise. Unfortunately, that little one I mentioned before often wakes up before the sun rises, so I've seen far <laughs> too many. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm the opposite. I love the sunrise, the new day, fresh start, Aww. so many things to do, so many opportunities. I'm an early bird, so yeah, I love it. I love the mornings. It makes it easier being an early bird. I'm the same way. I, uh, I like to see the sunrise come up. Although in the ideal, I've, I've been when I was traveling though, when I was young and crazy, I've seen a sunset and a sunrise, so all in the same. <laughs> you watch the sun go down, you watch it rise on the other end. So, um, When you have 30 minutes of free time, what do you do with it? Mm. Uninterrupted free time. Uninterrupted free time. Okay. Brian, you have 30 minutes of uninterrupted free time. I take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love naps it. are the best. They yeah, are. I love naps. Oh, and yeah. You can do it, too. You can nap, because I can't nap. I'm so oh, yeah, I, I just set my alarm on my phone, and I'm like, I think I learned it because when I lived in my fraternity house in college, I would always take a nap after class because no one was in the house usually because everyone was gone during the day. And so since college, I've always been a napper. I can I fit it in, and like 15, 20 minutes, and I'm ready to go. Nice. That's awesome, Cameron. It is so rare for me to get 30 uninterrupted minutes. <laughs> You know, but what, I you know I love I love magazines. Um, I work for a magazine, but I love like the 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 photo oriented, like the home design and decorating magazines. I love those. I think it's just if I had, I could spend hours just slipping through the pages and mm. looking at beautifully decorated homes. Yeah, I um, Cameron, I love reading, and so when I get time, I love just opening a book, reading, and I love reading with a coffee. So both of those things combined I think is, is awesome. Nice. I weirdly look at pictures of food sometimes when I have 30 minutes. I just like look at food. <laughs> it's a weird thing. I've talked to people who do it too. I don't know what it is, but it's just like 
or I, it's because I like to ba I'm like I like to bake too. Um, so I'll be like looking at like baking recipes and gosh, like there's some beautiful pictures of cakes and muffins. You just get into it. It's, it's weird. And what what uh, what websites do you like to look at food on? Um, there's something called Food Gawker that I look at a lot. Um, dot com. Uh, food Gawker. There's lots of recipes that they feature. Food Fifty Two. Um, it's a whole culture. It's 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 strange to to think about what I'm doing sometimes, but. <laughs> If I'm feeling more motivated, I'll go for a walk or something. But otherwise, I'm like, oh, that cake looks great. <laughs> nice. um, what is your favorite holiday? I, uh, My favorite is coming up. Mine is Halloween, so I'm super excited. But that's my favorite holiday. Mm. Brian, what's your favorite holiday? Uh, I Well, I would agree with Claire. I love Halloween, but I'm super competitive when it comes to my Halloween costume. Um, <laughs> And, but otherwise, I would say Christmas or Thanksgiving, just because I get to see my family because I live so far away from them. So I guess it's it's twofold. Twofold. So so I got to hear about these these Halloween costumes. You get really competitive. What what's been a favorite costume you've done? Uh, one year there, I had a group of friends. We uh, there was four guys and four girls, and we called our we, we get together every two weeks on a Tuesday night for dinner. We called it Center Dinner. And so we would get together, and then we would I mean, we would try out a new restaurant. And so one year for Halloween, I had our costumes made because that's what I do. But we went as a deck of cards. But it was like the girls went as the kings and, we went as the kings and queens of spades, diamond clubs, and whatever, um, and hearts. And so the girls had these huge, full like queen dresses on, and then they wore bustiers, and then they had these big capes, and then we had crowns with whatever symbol it was. And we went to a Halloween party, and literally, we um, we didn't even get to walk. I mean, uh, we've got our picture taken a million times. And then maybe the best, one of the funniest, one of my best friends and I, we went as those tragic perfume ladies that, like, squirt perfume. <laughs> so we, we got we got really bad smelling perfume and we made the oh. perfume uh, part. <laughs> we made up a, a name that I won't repeat on here, but uh, <laughs> the name of our perfume was. But we gave out samples and we had these, I mean, we went to the 99 cent store and got our fingernails. Like, we we were so tragic, but we, uh, we, were, rose in, we were rose incarnation and we were tragic perfume ladies. Oh, I love that. That That's is so... One. Funny. And everyone at the party was like, please quit spraying that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cameron, Cameron what's, your, what's your favorite holiday? Yeah, I, I love Halloween too. Um, as I mentioned, we used to have an annual Halloween party. Um, I have a child, though, who's become terrified of like all things Halloween, so I don't think I can even decorate my house for Halloween anymore. <laughs> Uh, she's going to be too scared. But I do love Thanksgiving. You know, any holiday that's centered around food is just great. Um, and Christmas is fun, too, because it means my family's going to come together and um, I get to hang out with them. Awesome. Yeah, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving because I just love making food. I love making tons of food. That's probably why I'm in the kitchen so long because I'll make, like, three times what I should because I love the leftovers the most. And so... Yeah, I just love the smell of pumpkin pie and the nutmeg and the cinnamon and the smell of the stuffing and the turkey. And I love being together with family. So, yeah, it's one of my favorite holidays. Claire, what's yours? Mine is, oh, mine is Halloween. Oh, yeah, Halloween, yeah. okay. Something about it. I mean, obviously, you get to dress up as whatever you want and go and be the bad perfume lady if you want full, yeah. full rain. Perfect. I'm thinking this year. I'm like, who am I gonna be? I kind of want to be Bob Ross. You know the the guy who does the uh, the paintings on like oh, the, the happy tree. <laughs> the happy pa little happy tree. Yeah, I don't get like the like, hair. I mean Richard Simmons and an artist. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. You like build it into one sentence, and that's what I want to be this Halloween. So stay tuned. That's we'll great. see. We'll see. I have some time that's, to plan. That's great, Claire. Um, <laughs> And then last question, because we're talking about dinner parties, and this is a question that I actually don't love answering, because a lot of times I, I'm not sure, but um, I'm going to ask you guys, what famous person, dead or alive, would you invite to dinner if you could? I can oh, go wow. first if you want. Yeah, go, Claire, you go first. You have to think about this. Okay, so I was thinking about it, and I was like, I love Anthony Bourdain, so I think living, I would I would enjoy speaking with him. I think he's got a lot of cool experience. Um 
and you know he's he's a big a big name. Anthony Bourdain. If I could eat dinner with Beyonce, I would. I think that that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> and then uh, and then John Muir. I he grew up right uh, where I grew up as well, or he had a house right where I grew up. So I've always been very interested in him as a naturalist. So John Muir would be another one. Oh, yeah. so Beyonce, John Muir, <laughs> and Anthony Bourdain. It would be the best party ever. Awesome. Brian, who would you love to have as a guest? Uh, Dad, probably uh, some like a great like my great grandfather or great grandmother, someone from my family that you know I just is so far back that it would just be interesting to find out a little bit more about our history. Mm. Um, alive, I would probably say. Um, Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, I would probably say um, the Queen of England. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have some tea with the Queen. Oh, yeah. I just feel like <laughs> think she's been in. She's been, you know, the monarch for so long that she's seen so much going on that, like, I don't know. I, I love history, so I think I would get a history lesson from her and a history lesson from. Our past relative, so I think that that would be interesting. I love that, Cameron. Oh, just skip me. <laughs> I, question. I know, yeah. right? I was like writing it out. I was like, should I do it? People hate this question, and I did it anyway. You, 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 can't, you just, you just got, you just got to go along with the party. You can say. Uh, see, I don't have any like celebrity questions or anything. Um, <sighs> You could. This could be the thing where you're like, I wouldn't have any a dinner with anyone else but you guys right now. Like, and that way <laughs> answer the question. Oh, uh, the four of us. We're gonna have a dinner party. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm It would always be really fascinating to have dinner with any sitting president. You know, to really like so far his pick his brain. Why are you doing this? Why are you putting yourself? Of course, you know, you're the most powerful person, you know, in the country, possibly the world, but why would you put yourself in this position where if anything goes wrong in the country, you're getting blamed for it? You know, it would be fascinating mm -hmm. to talk to any president, you know, regardless of what your political standings are. Um, that would certainly be someone, you know, who would be great for a conversation at a dinner party. Um, Dad, I mean, certainly there are some celebrities who've passed away recently who would have been wonderful to have had as dinner guests. Um, personally, though, uh, my father passed away, uh, let's see, how many years ago? 13 years ago? If I could have him back for our holiday gatherings, that would be the best. Yeah, I would say um, for a live, I would love to meet and have dinner with David Sedaris. He's one of my favorite writers. That's so a good he one. Would, he yeah. would definitely be, and then um, for those, for someone who passed away recently, uh, David Rakoff, uh, another favorite writer of mine, um, those would be two people who I would love to be able to hang out with over dinner. This would be good, dinner parties. Well, thank you guys for answering my question. Thank you, thank you so much, <laughs> and thank you everybody for for being with us today. It's been awesome hanging out and having a little party right here during our hangout. <laughs> I would agree. Um, I want to remind everybody that if you'd like to see the recap, uh, slide share, and highlights from today's chat, uh, you can go to bit.ly slash frugal-dinner and that'll bring you over to our extreme blog post where you can get links to, to learn more about Brian, Cameron, and Claire. Uh, I'll have links there as well as highlights from the, from the chat today. Also want to remind you that we have this video chat and tweet chat every single Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Please join us. We would love to talk with you. And just want to let you know that next week we're having a chat with Jay Money from Budgets Are Sexy and Laura Shin from Forbes to talk about how to start earning more money. And you know Jay Money is all about the side hustle. So different side jobs you can do to make extra income. And I want to remind you that if you'd like to follow us on YouTube, um, you can learn more about our chats and view past chats just by subscribing. So I encourage you to subscribe to our Experian YouTube page. And I want to thank you all for talking and tweeting with us, and we look forward to chatting with you next week. Bye. Thank you.